Um, and the object of the exercise is to uh, get feedback from those that are listening and for people to ask questions on whatever topic is being discussed. Uh, my topic today basically will be the, uh, the space station and our moon. And the reason I mention those two things is because there's a few uh, anomalies, especially about the moon and uh, space exploration generally. You'll probably remember that there were several missions to the moon in the 19, uh, late 60s and the early 1970s. In fact, the last mission to the moon, I think, was Apollo 14, if I'm right, in 1976. Now, if you believe what has been published, apparently humans are not allowed back to the moon. Uh, they have been prohibited from going back to the moon. I'll, say so, I'll say explain so. what's behind that comment in just a second. China are about to go there within the next but 10 years. If you uh, bother to think about the immediate past, you'll realise that since 1976, no one has been to the moon since. In fact, uh, and so to uh, make up for that shortfall, uh, we've built the space station over a couple of decades. And you've all heard of the space station, of course, and uh, the Hubble telescope, which is a wonderful piece of engineering in itself. However, I think it was Apollo 11 when the uh, controversy started in 1969, was it? Doesn't give me a year there, it would have been, or it might have been 1970. But apparently, we were beaten to the moon by other life forms a long, long time ago. And if you believe what you read on the internet, a lot of it, of course, uh, is um, superfluous rubbish. But there are some serious sites. In fact, if you go to uh, ufocasebook.com slash moon, um, you'll find all the data that I relate to here and more. But when the uh, Apollo lander landed on the moon, across a crater from the lander, the uh, astronauts uh, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong were absolutely amazed by the fact that there was other spacecraft on the other side of the crater that they were there. That's all documented, everything's documented. By who? By who? An idiot. Well, if you go to the site that I just mentioned here, ufocasebook.com slash moon, you can find out for yourself. And from that site, you can go to other sites, of course, to uh, reaffirm the research that I refer to here. But um, I'll just read a few of the uh, comments made. For instance, um, Neil Armstrong relayed the message to Mission Control, NASA that is, that two large mysterious objects were watching them after having landed near the moon module. But his message was never heard by the public because NASA censored it. And that is true. NASA is partly funded by a defence budget. It's not a purely civilian organisation. There's, uh, there are defence contracts, uh, secrecy contracts that the uh, astronauts have to sign and anything they see or discover, especially controversial stuff, they're not allowed to make public because they sign a contract of secrecy uh, and that NASA is the only body apart from uh, covert organisations such as the CIA, etc that are allowed to have uh, that particular information. However, there are amateur radio operators, very clever people who can intercept what NASA tries to block. Someone's smiling there, but the, the fact that ham radio operators are, uh, and I knew a few years ago, they're very clever people and uh, they can intercept just about anything, um, including police, intelligence services and all the rest, if you know what you're doing. But getting back to the moon, um, Buzz Aldrin took colour um, movies of the UFOs from inside the module and continued filming them after he and Armstrong went outside. 
Um, Dr. Azar Zara yep. claims that the UFOs departed minutes after the astronauts came out onto the lunar surface. Now, on the other side of the moon, that's the side of the moon we never see from Earth, because it never faces it, uh, apparently, if you believe what's on this site, um, there are <laughs> historic uh, ruins of buildings, uh, there are clear domes of huge size, there are uh, rectangular structures that are not uh, formed by uh, natural attrition or anything like that. They are definitely purpose-built objects. And uh, it goes on and on. There's a whole lot about the moon that is not made public, although it is public, but um, it's made public in such a way that it always will be questionable and, and not believe. Yes? Um, what is your purpose of uh, enlightening us like that? What is my purpose of enlightening on that? Well, it's no genuine purpose, I suppose, but, well, there is a purpose behind it, really, um, and that is to suggest to you that, um, you know, humans are not um, the only intelligent life form in the cosmos. Um, the uh, cosmos is, is enormous. I mean, you could not comprehend it. Um, even in the past 20 years, we've discovered literally hundreds of planets. And a mere 30, 40 years ago, planets were thought to be non-existent. That uh, only our solar system was unique, and that our planet Earth was particularly unique in itself. But uh, as the decades have uh, melted away and uh, technology calibrations have intensified, um, it's been uh, just, well, we've been discovering planets now literally every day, new planets every day. Most of them would be hostile to life that we, you know, we know of. Um, most of them would appear to be hostile. But remember, on this planet, on this planet, uh, there are life forms that exist without any light whatsoever, and at extremely high temperatures that would kill us outright. On this planet, and that's uh, you know depths in the ocean of say 15, 10, 15 kilometres deep, where no light reaches that part of the ocean, uh, ocean floor, and there are microbes and other organisms living extremely viably. There are organisms that actually live in rock where there's absolutely no light at all. Um, you know, we have life forms on this planet that live in the most hostile places that you could imagine in terms of temperature, lack of light and lack of oxygen. So if we have those forms of life on this planet and you've got literally possibly trillions of planets throughout the known universe, you can imagine that there would be probably the teeming life forms um, beyond this planet. Yes. Um, are these other life forms a threat? Are they a threat? No, what, uh, the extraterrestrial? Yeah. Probably, possibly. Uh, they're probably not even interested in us. Uh, they'd be interested in us uh, as an amusement um, park. Uh, watching us evolve, um, watching our technology grow. It would be fascinating to a very highly intelligent uh, species, civilization, if you like, to be monitoring us. It would be fascinating. Imagine if we discovered um, relatively intelligent life forms, let's say on the moon. It's not on the moon, but let's say we discovered it, and we'd, we'd leave them alone because we want to see how they evolve and what they do. Um, be fascinating, it really would. Um, there have been theories that um, aliens, that is uh, millions of years in advance of us, or millions, um, can morph into a human shape and you wouldn't pick them. So, uh, I could be an alien? Yeah, it could be an alien, exactly. Yeah. But the alien would know if he's an alien. Obviously, we would hope. Um, I mean, we can actually change now genetically we can hold the DNA of organisms here, and uh, I think the Japanese succeeded in 
putting a rat's face on a, on a uh, was it a cat or a, some, some other animal. I mean, we can actually genetically rearrange hey, life forms uh, now. She meant to come in later. Very she meant to come in later. So oh, you can imagine yeah. life civilizations that got millions of years Same with norm. where we are now, what yeah. they could do. I mean, they could morph into anything. So how do we Probably tell be invisible. How do we tell an alien's among us? What's that? How do we tell if it's an alien among us right now? Good question. I don't know. Uh, the, the conspiracy theory is that a lot of them are in government and uh, covertly, covertly prevented nuclear holocaust, which was uh, during the Cold War. Um, I mean, they, they can see our frailties, obviously, because uh, they're up there. Um, so they probably babysitting us, but without us realising it. But they wouldn't be too concerned about humans, generally speaking, because um, what do we have to offer? Uh, we're very warmongering, and the last thing, decent civilizations that are above our level of competence would want is for us to start sperming, swarming throughout the cosmos with our warmongering intellect. Our hate-filled, I'm talking here generally, uh, we have a, a very precarious software and uh, it's not something that would be uh, stable. However, that's, that's beside the point. Um, they, they, they would have no interest in um, colonising Earth, taking over Earth, because there are literally billions of planets throughout the, uh, our galaxy anyway let alone other galaxies, so it's not as if they're short of real estate. Uh, you know, this earth here, I mean there's water on the moon, believe it or not, there's, there's water on Mars, most of it is uh, uh, frozen CO2 on Mars, but there is water up there. Uh, so there's water pretty much throughout the solar system, not to the extent that it is on this planet, except maybe Titan, I think that's... Uh, a Titan is a moon of um, Jupiter, I think, I believe, yeah. And that apparently has got a frozen, literally a frozen body of water around it that yet to ascertain whether it's actually water, whether it's frozen CO2, or some okay. other chemical, but it appears to be water. And it appears to be liquid because the surface cracks and the cracks seem to move. So it seems to be a, a very uh, liquid planet. Uh, moon, I mean. There is, um, of course, an attempt, a recent attempt, and the US, NASA has admitted or stated that they're going to send uh, further uh, orbiters to Mars.